Hey everybody, this is Ryan Trout with PC Perspective, here to talk about the new Core i7 7700K Cabby Lake processor. Now as you can tell, I'm not at home, we are not in our normal studio, uh, but I decided that uh, even though we're at CS and we're going to cover this product remotely, it would make sense to have uh, our YouTube viewers get a, a have a discussion, I guess, about this particular processor. So we're going to run through this pretty quick. Uh, obviously, all the detail and benchmarks and analysis is uh, is on the full article at PCPro.com. I encourage everybody to go and check that out. So what do you need to know about Cabby Lake? First of all, there is no fundamental change architecturally from Cabby Lake or to Cabby Lake from Skylake before. This is something we've known about, we've talked about for a while. There are no IPC changes, uh, no instructions per clock adjustments, no architectural uh, improvements that Intel has made. This is simply a refinement of process technology and a refinement of the processor because of it. That refinement comes in the form of higher clock speeds, essentially. Uh, the 7700K runs at a base clock of 4.2 gigahertz with a boost clock of 4.5 gigahertz. That is higher than the 6700K that ran at 4.0 to 4.2. So you're gonna get a you know, three to 400 megahertz kind of improvement out of the box, two to 300 megahertz improvement out of the box uh, with, this, with this new processor, which is obviously going to equate to slightly better performance. The only other major feature that Cabby Lake adds is support for HEVC decode, H.265 uh, decode acceleration. So it's doing that off of the processor cores and on the uh, dedicated hardware block as part of the media engine this time around. So um, for, for mobile users, that makes a lot more sense. It's much more important because you're worried about battery life and power consumption to a, to a much higher degree. Uh, with uh, consumer desktop parts, eh, it's kind of important. Uh, you've also got to count, take into account that you might already have a discrete GPU that's going to be able to do that. So there's less of a, of a weight necessarily on that. The processor that Intel sent us for review is the 7700K. It is a uh, four core, eight thread part, uh, DDR4 memory still up to 2400 megahertz. So that's a little bit of a boost, kind of the out of box memory frequency that you get. Um, and it is still launching at the same 91 watt TDP and same $339 MSRP. So there's no price increase. There's also no price decrease, uh, but you're essentially getting a slightly higher frequencies. Um, as we look at uh, platforms and changes. We are getting a new chipset with this, the Intel Z270 chipset. Mori will have a lot of uh, Z270 articles to go along with this particular launch as well. So if you're interested in those, go to PCPro.com and take a look. Um, the only change on the chipset side is that the chipset now has 24 lanes of PCI Express instead of 20 lanes. Not a big change. What this does allow is the Z270 chipset to support Intel Optane memory which we don't know a whole bunch about yet. Uh, we're still learning more about it. That's more of a springtime release, but uh, it will require Z270 and Cabby Lake seventh generation core processors to support Intel's uh, Optane kind of caching technology. Um, but otherwise, processors are compatible, right? You can use a uh, Cabby Lake processor on a Z170 board. You can use a... Um, uh, a, a Skylake processor on a Z270 board, right? If you want to do that for whatever reason you you may be doing it, you can you can absolutely do that. Um, we use the Asus Maximus 9 code motherboard for this. It's actually a really impressive board. Go to the review and check, see some pictures of it and check it out. A um, couple things to touch on real quick. Overclocking on this went pretty well. I was able to run this processor at 5.1 gigahertz stable with a 1.3 five voltage, uh, 1.35 volts on the, on the V core. And, um, even though, you know, we're talking about a five to 600 megahertz overclock over the base, uh, or over the, the turbo boost, which is not extraordinary. Just the fact that we can say we're running at over five gigahertz stable on all cores with, you know, basic all in one water cooling, a Corsair H 115i is really, really impressive. Uh, and uh, that will be something that is kind of like a, a feather in Intel's cap, I guess, for the time being. More is going to have more on the overclocking side of it as well as he's going to take a look at a bunch of different motherboards uh, with that capability. Uh, that overclocking capability does net you 13 to 16% of free performance. Uh, if you look at Pavre, Cinebench, Handbrake, very highly threaded applications that are loading down the CPU completely. So getting 15% free performance uh, for running that overclocking simply by changing the multiplier and adjusting the voltage is, is pretty awesome. Uh, integrated graphics performance really sees modest increases, just a couple of percent uh, this way, but people who are buying the 7700K aren't worried about integrated graphics performance in, in reality. Uh, what you might be interested in is the clock for clock performance. 
this is a test we started doing with, I believe we started doing with uh, Hasbell or Broadwell, continued in Skylake, and, and here with Cabby Lake, it makes sense. This is where we run all these processors from Sandy Bridge, Ivy Bridge, Hasbell, Broadwell, Skylake, and now Cabby Lake at 3.5 gigahertz and kind of show you where their performance is if they're all running at the same clock speed. And as we talked about at the beginning of this video, uh, Cabby Lake doesn't have a lot to show here. Um, Cinebench 11.5 running in single thread gets a score of 1.71 on Cabby Lake and 1.72 on Skylake, guys. So you are essentially um, leveling out on the IPC, which sucks. It's not something we wanted to see. This is kind of the first time we've gone away from the TikTok model. Now we're in TikTok optimize. This is the optimize step. Um, so you're, you're not going to see any improvements there clock for clock. If you're running a Skylake processor, it's the same frequency as Cabby Lake. It's going to be the same, it can be the same performance. No, nothing we can do about that there. Uh, if you look through our benchmarks though, there are a couple of places where Cabby Lake is a little bit faster. And again, that is because of the clock speed deltas between the two processors out of the box. Um, the differences are pretty small, ranging from, you know, 0% dead even to maybe 1% behind because of uh, testing errors up to like two or 3% faster. Uh, the only uh, one benchmark that stood out to me was, um, uh, Sysmark 2014 SE, which showed a eh, 7% advantage for Cabby Lake. And the reason that benchmark shows a difference compared to things like Handbrake or uh, X264 Encode is that uh, the Sysmark office productivity uh, um, testing is very burst oriented. It is very much a how quickly can we get this Excel macro to run and then wait? How quickly can we get this uh, Premiere or Photoshop filter to run and then wait? And the capability for Cabby Lake's processors to get to higher frequencies more quickly means that the advantages are going to be slightly elevated in those particular workloads. And none of the other benchmarks we have uh, really demonstrate that like Sysmark does, which is one of the reasons we included it this year, uh, because everything else is very much a sustained workload uh, without kind of emphasizing some of the, the real world use cases that it may have. So you can look through all the benchmarks there and kind of see what I'm telling you if you, if you don't want to believe me. Power consumption is essentially the same, no changes. Um, your performance per dollar is essentially the same, you know, a couple of percent better. Again, because the 6700K and the 7700K are the same price. Um, should not be a shock to anybody. So what, what does that come out to in our conclusion, right? This is, this is a short and to the point video, guys. The Core i7-7700K, Cabby Lake processor, is the new best consumer processor from Intel and for anybody, from anybody really, if you think about it. Um, what that means is if you're building a new system today or for the next six to eight months, this is going to be the processor that we recommend people buy, right? If you have a, a fairly moderate budget of 1500 bucks or so, this is the processor with a Z270 motherboard and DDR4 memory that you should pick to, you know, take care of your gaming system, your rendering system, your productivity system, whatever it happens to be. If you already have a 6700K, if you already have any Skylake system, if you already have a Haswell system, maybe even a Broadwell, Ivy Bridge, Sandy Bridge system, the discussion is more complex, right? Clearly, if you have a 6700K, you don't need to spend the money to upgrade to this processor. You're not going to get anything from it. Um, if you have a Sandy Bridge processor, maybe you have a something even before that, like in the Halo, maybe you're on a Core i7-920 uh, or, or something along those lines, um, then the same argument that exists for uh, uh, Skylake, when it launched uh, last year, is, is equivalent here, right? Like, I, I think it's probably time to upgrade, um, and, the, and the 7700K Cabby Lake is a, is a perfectly good processor to use for those use cases. It's just not something that I think a lot of people should go out and buy. It's just the new part from Intel, and we'll have to wait and see what the 10 nanometer uh, shift when we get to that eventually. Although the rumors are now that we're going to see another 14 nanometer revision on the desktop side with a new architecture, mind you, um, before we get to, to 10 nanometer on that. So um, it is launching today. It apparently will be on sale on the 5th. Motherboards, processors, all that stuff will be on sale on the 5th. Uh, I encourage you guys to go to PCPro.com and check out our uh, full review of that. Uh, we have some other discussions in there about like, what if you have, sh should you worry about this at all if you have eight eight core processor today that maybe runs at a lower frequency? It depends on your single threaded workloads versus your multi-threaded workloads. Um, so that's, that's where we're at. I really feel like Cabby Lake is going to be disappointing to a lot of people on the desktop side. Um, it's not a bad part. It's just not that much better than the previous part, which for Intel and their competitive landscape uh, against 
AMD and even their own stuff is a perfectly reasonable uh, assessment for them. So uh, on the mobile side, it makes a lot more sense for notebooks. The move from Skylake to Kaby Lake means significantly more and will result in significantly more for desktop consumers. Eh, it's okay. It's a good part. If you're building a system, this is what we'd go with. So make sure you go to PCPro.com, check out the full review, guys. And uh, if you're watching this near launch day, make sure you're going to PCPro.com slash CES and checking out all of our CES coverage uh, from this week as well. It's going to be a busy week. A lot of product launches, a lot of reviews, a lot of uh, architecture previews. A lot is going to be happening. Um, so make sure you stay tuned to PCPro.com. Thanks, guys.